Hey guys, Cody with Princess Craft RV. Come along with me today as we go through this 2021 Lance 2285. We're gonna cover all the systems operations, how to get it hooked up to your tow vehicle, basically how to use the trailer today. So let's get started right up front here on how to get this thing hooked up to your tow vehicle. This trailer is equipped with the LCI Smart Jack. So it's all electric raising and lowering. It's gonna be the two buttons here on the uh, top here for up and down. And you also have an LED light ring around the uh, base of it to help with nighttime hookup. Now, this jack does have a manual override. It's gonna be right here. You just pop this little cap off. It's gonna be this uh, fitting right in here and your uh, tool that's supplied by Lance for taking your lug nuts off will actually fit this and work just fine. This jack also has some other features such as hitch memory height, and um, auto retract. So right here on the uh, side of the jack, it does give you some instructions on how to do that. Um, once you find your, your hitch height, you're gonna push the up and down button for five seconds and it's going to memorize your hitch height. So for loading and unloading, you can just recall that height that makes it really quick, which is the next step. It shows you how to recall that height. And then um, your auto retract, you push the uh, down button three times holding it on the third time until it starts to retract and then it you can let go and it'll finish retracting on its own. So it makes uh, hooking up really easy, really smooth, and you can walk away and do other things as it finishes running. So now that we've covered the jack operation, let's go over your coupler. Uh, two and five sixteenths balls, what this trailer is gonna be equipped with. And once you get your tow vehicle backed under it, using the jack to lower down onto the ball, you're just gonna pick your coupler up and slide it forward and drop it down, making sure that these two ears are all the way down into the cavity there. And you will be coupled, and then it comes with a safety pin that goes through. It's got a little detent there on it, so it's not gonna back out on its own. And that's gonna make sure that that latch doesn't accidentally open. Now, once you go to unhook, um, all you're gonna have to do is pick up on the coupler and slide it back and leave it there, and that will release it from the ball. A couple other things that do need to be hooked up to your tow vehicle are gonna be your safety chains. Now these do need to cross over each other and create kind of a basket under the hitch here. And they are gonna clip onto the receiver hitch on the back of the tow vehicle. We're also gonna have your safety breakaway cable for the electric brakes. This is a safety device. If you were to get completely uncoupled from the tow vehicle, this is gonna yank out of the box that's up here on the uh, tongue of the trailer and engage the brakes on the trailer to bring it to a stop. Now this needs to run on its own path, don't route it through the chains, and it needs to be on its own clip, again, attached to the receiver hitch of the tow vehicle. And the last thing that's going to hook up to our tow vehicle is gonna be our seven-way plug. This is gonna go right into the seven-way receptacle on the back of the tow vehicle and provide all our light functions to the trailer, like running lights, turn signals, and brake lights. It's also going to provide a charge to the onboard batteries on the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with a charge line. And it's also going to provide uh, the brake function to the electric brakes on the trailer if your tow vehicle is equipped with a brake control. Now Lance has started um, equipping their trailers with a um, basically a mount for your seven-way cord and your chains right here behind the tongue jack. So they just the cord just drops into the socket there and then your chains can just hang on each side that and you can even hang your breakaway cable up in here and this is really nice to keep everything up off the ground keep it clean keep it out of the mud and uh, more than anything keeping all the crud out of your seven-way plug moving back from there we're going to have our propane storage cover here a couple different ways to get into this first we're just going to show you how to do basic operation we're going to take a coin because that's going to make life easier and we're going to twist this little uh, black piece on the top allow us to remove this lid and inside you will find access to your three propane cylinders. The two in the back are gonna be hooked up so we can get in here and do basic uh, shutting off and turning on of our cylinders and switching over our regulator. Now to actually remove the cylinders or to do any switching around, we're gonna to have to remove this cover completely. To do that, we're gonna snap up the little black latches here. There's one in each corner, so there's four total. Once we get all those off, then we can take this and fish this out of here. It's got to kind of go at an angle out. And now we have complete access to our cylinders. Now to remove these uh, for refilling or servicing. To get the front one out, it's very simple. This one can replace either of these and an empty can come to the front. Totally up to you how you do this. We're just going to undo this clamp right here. And then we can lift this cylinder out. 
Now to get the back two out, to get those out, first things we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure whichever cylinder we're moving that our service valve is shut to the off position. So all the way to the right, all the way to the left is on, all the way to the right is off. We're gonna loosen our wing nut. This does not, should not need to come all the way out, but some people do like it that way. Um, go ahead and remove your service, uh, service hose. We're gonna raise the T-bar up. Now to get these out, you do actually have to spin them. And then we can tip them out and pull them out of the unit. Now, these cylinders can be exchanged or refilled, whatever is available to you or whatever works best for you. Uh, whenever you transport a cylinder like this, make sure it stays in the upright position. If you still have your dust cap, use it to protect your uh, inlet there for all your propane. And uh, just keep it in the upright position. Once you get it refilled, you can come and put it back into whichever position needs to be installed. Uh, to put it back in, it's just gonna be the opposite. Again, we're gonna rotate the cylinder to get it back into place completely. And I like to connect my service hoses before I get everything tight down, just in case I need to rotate the cylinder a little bit. But once we get it in there, we'll go ahead and snug our wing nut back down. And this does not need to be over tight. Just snug is really all you need. We just wanna make sure things stay in place. So just like that. Now, for the operation of your regulator here, if you leave both cylinders open, this regulator is gonna automatically draw from your primary cylinder, which is determined by this lever first, and then it's gonna automatically switch over to the other one. If we recommend running it in what we would call a manual mode, so you're gonna leave one cylinder on, one cylinder off, and we're gonna use this to determine which cylinder we are using. So right now we're pointing to this cylinder. Once this one goes empty, we would take and turn this and turn that cylinder on, and now we can use that one. We know this one's empty. We can go ahead and make our switch with our spare, or go take it and get it refilled or exchanged, whatever works, and continue camping. To put your spare cylinder back in, we're just gonna drop it back in the ring. Make sure it sits all the way down in there, and we're gonna reattach our clamp, like so. And since this one's a spare, do make sure your dust cover's on. And that is it as far as how to use your propane stuff up here on the tongue. Putting the cover back on, again, we're just gonna kind of fish it in at an angle. Now when this sits in place, you do have uh, tracks on each corner that it sits in. And then you're just gonna loop your latches on and snap them shut and do it on both sides. All right, let's move on around the trailer here. Moving on to the off door side of the trailer, starting right up front here, um, we're gonna have your battery compartment. This is gonna be one of your batteries. The 2285 does come equipped with two. The other one's gonna be on the other side in the front. So to get these trays out, you just pull up on this latch and then pull out, and it's gonna pull out inside. You will find, from us, it will be an Interstate Batteries Marine RV Deep Cycle Battery. Um, currently, we are getting some that are Maintenance free, so you don't need to pop the caps on them, check water levels or anything like that. But keep them clean. Check your connections, make sure there's no corrosion going on and keep them tight. Make sure all that stuff is good. Other than that, that's pretty much all you've got going on in here. Moving just below that, we are gonna find your uh, stabilizer jack switches. We're gonna have a power switch right here in the middle. When the red light's on, that means that your jacks now have power to them and then we're gonna use our switches uh, to run them up and down. And you're just gonna push extend for extend, and that's gonna be your one here. And then the one in the rear is gonna be for the rear jack. Now there's another set of switches on the other side of the trailer for the other two stabilizers. I will show you those when we get over there. One thing to keep in mind about stabilizers is that they are just for stabilizing the trailer. They are not to be used to level the trailer. Once you get the trailer leveled with the axles and the tongue jack, that's when you're gonna run your stabilizers down and apply pressure to stabilize the trailer. 
Moving back from there, we do have your uh, storage compartment here. This is a good storage compartment for a portable generator. It does come with some safety straps in here, secure straps, so you can secure whatever it is that you've got in here to keep it from bouncing around. They've also got your tire changing tool in here that comes from Lance. So it's an extendable tire changing tool. It's gonna be a great device for changing a flat. They don't provide you with a torque wrench, so it is recommended that you pick up a torque wrench to keep with your trailer to use. And the other thing that's gonna be way back here in the corner is gonna be your battery disconnect switch. So to use this switch, it's just on and off. If you can remove the uh, switch from the disconnect, then it's disconnected. If you cannot, then it is in the on position. It's just a quarter turn to turn it on and off. When it goes into storage, you're gonna to wanna to turn that off to disconnect your 12 volt batteries from the trailer. And then underneath that compartment, we are gonna find your toy lock mounted down here on the frame. This is cool for uh, locking up your generators or dirt bikes or anything that you may bring along with you. You just pull it out. You can hear that it's ratcheting and it'll lock at length whenever you do that does come with a lock here you're just going to take this loop it through whatever you're trying to lock up and then you can retract it back secure it lock it all that good stuff it's a really cool device easy to use two stickers right behind that compartment the top one's going to be your lance sticker it's going to provide your VIN, your weights tire sizes all that good stuff the uh, yellow one there below that's going to have again your tire size it's also going to have your recommended tire pressures for your trailer so Know that sticker, memorize it, and that's what you need to set your tire pressures to. And check them before each trip when you check your lug nut torque spec. We do have an exterior storage compartment here. This is not gonna be a dry storage area, but it is a good place where you can keep some stuff, um, you know, that you wanna store outside that's not gonna be any issue about getting wet. Black tank flush connection. When you are dumping your black tank, which is gonna be the left handle here, it says body waste. When you're dumping that, you can hook up your uh, black flush hose right here, have your sewer hose connected, have this valve open, and let the water run for about five to 10 minutes through this connection, and that's gonna really help flush out that tank and get anything that may not have come out uh, just through the normal dump process out, so you make sure you get a good clean tank. While we're talking about tanks, Again, the one on the left is gonna be your body waste, which is your toilet water or your black water. The handle on the right is gonna be gray, which is liquid waste, which is your sink and shower. To connect a sewer hose, you just remove the cap. It's just a twist lock bayonet fitting, and you will then twist lock your uh, sewer hose on and run it over to the dump. All right, moving up here to the slide on the 2285, let's just talk about some quick maintenance tips. You do have your slide tracks here, top and bottom of the slide. You are gonna to wanna to keep these clean and lubricated probably about every 90 days if you're using it pretty regularly. Just make sure there's no heavy debris on them. You can wipe them off or dust them off with a broom or whatever. Get some uh, lube that has like Teflon or TPFE in it. Um, spray it on there, run the slide in and out a couple times to transfer to the gears in the wall. Be good to go. And then we've got your rubber seals. Go all the way around the slide, top, bottom, and sides. They do make a uh, conditioner for your slide seals to keep them pliable so the sun doesn't cook them and break them down and you don't end up with any water leaks there. So good idea on that, again, about every 90 days. Uh, storage compartment here on the side of the slide, it's gonna be two thumb locks and a key lock in the middle to secure. When you push it open, it's gonna be a magnetic catch here that holds it open, so you just have to push up to it. And inside you can see a nice large storage compartment there. Um, try not to overload this. You know, you don't wanna put like your whole life in here and put too much weight in here. Um, just be reasonable about it. All right, moving just behind the slide, we have our outside shower. It's gonna be hot and cold mixing valves, just like mixing up shower temperature at home. And for the uh, flow control, it's gonna be this lever here. When you push it down, water's gonna come out of the head, and this is actually gonna lock in place. To get it to release, we're just gonna push down on it here, and that's gonna shut it off. Now, remember to turn the water off here when you are done using this. It can cause some mixing of your hot water, and you may not end up with proper temperatures. And when you winterize the trailer, make sure you don't forget this because this is a prone freeze point. To store this, we're just gonna fish the hose back up into the housing. The head's gonna sit in there just like that. And it's gonna be a spring-loaded latch there that you just push down and close the lid. Connection below, that's gonna be for our potable water, our city water connection. This is where you're gonna hook up with a water hose to provide um, all of your water to the trailer um, if you have a city water connection so you're not using the onboard storage 
to get water and we'll cover out how to use that here shortly. Um, now this unit is equipped with a secondary gray tank, which is gonna be uh, back here underneath the slide, kind of towards the rear of the trailer. Uh, for this unit, that is actually probably gonna be your kitchen. So the other one's gonna be your shower and your uh, vanity area, and this one's gonna be for your kitchen here. So that's where all your kitchen water will go. Now the white handle that's just behind the axle, that's gonna be your fresh water drain. So if you're carrying fresh water with you and you're getting ready to store it or you're done traveling, whatever, you're just gonna pull that valve. That's gonna dump all the fresh water out of the trailer. Little black cap right here, open it up. Inside you're gonna find a satellite connection and a park cable connection. If you are carrying a portable satellite dome with you and you wanna hook up and get satellite, you're gonna hook it up to the satellite one. I'll show you how to make the other connections on the inside. If you are staying in a park that has park cable, it's gonna to go to this one. I'll show you how to do the other step on that once we get in inside the trailer, which then brings us to our 30 amp connection. Very easy, we're gonna have three slots on our cord. One of them is gonna be L-shaped. Inside the uh, trailer side, we're gonna have three prongs. One of them is gonna be L-shaped. We're just gonna match the two L's up. Push it on, give it a little twist to the right. That's gonna be the initial lock on. And then we're gonna take the uh, plastic collar and we wanna snug this down. We wanna make sure we get a good tight connection here so we don't get up any arcing or overheating on the trailer. All right, let's move around to the backside. So on the back side of the trailer, um, not a whole bunch here, but we do have a few things right here dead center, right behind the ladder, we are gonna find your rear observation camera. Uh, that is an option from Lance, not all of their trailers come with that. So if you want it, it can be done after the fact, but it is an option from Lance when they are brand new. Um, it comes on with the running lights of the trailer, so when you're uh, coupled up to the tow vehicle, you turn the running lights on, powers up the camera, and there is a wireless monitor that goes in the tow vehicle so you can see what's going on behind you. Uh, we're going to mount your license plate right here. It does have a light on it, and below that we're going to have your water heater. Um, so this one's already been equipped with an insect screen. This is to keep flying insects out, such as dirt daubers or wasps, so they don't get in and build nests. Now to open this up, we're gonna take this D loop, we're gonna flip it down and twist it, and that's gonna allow us to open the door of the water heater. Okay, moving inside behind the water heater door here, uh, bottom left corner is gonna be our drain plug. It's gonna be a Teflon or plastic style plug. I recommend getting some extras. You can cross thread those pretty easily when you're putting them in. And uh, so it's nice to have an extra one on hand just in case you do that, because otherwise it's gonna leak on you. Uh, moving over here is gonna be our burn chamber. So we have seen insects get in here and build cobweb nests, things like that that could affect the operation. So a little compressed air through here is not a bad idea. Keep things clean. Uh, top center is gonna be our safety device, our pop-off valve, uh, over temp device. This is gonna open up and drip water out of it if it overheats or the pressure gets too high in the system. And that can be completely normal to see some occasional drip on those. To close it, just again, fish that D-loop through there, pull on it a little bit, it is spring-loaded and you will be able to get that latched. Now you also have your roof access ladder back here. Um, it is a good idea to go up on your roof periodically and inspect your roof, look for issues up there that you might find suspicious. If you see any cracks or gaps in sealants, uh, tape peeling up, roof tape peeling up or anything like that, it's gonna be a good idea to contact your service facility and maybe send them some pictures if you're concerned about it or schedule an appointment to get it in and get it checked out. Now Lance also uses a four inch square bumper on the back end here that you can store your sewer hose in. Just has a rubber plug here that you squeeze and pull out and you can fit your sewer hose in there to store it so it makes a nice uh, area there for that. Okay, to finish up here on the back, we've got your vent hood vent right here. It's got two thumb latches on the inside that you gotta kind of push up and pop open. There's a little flap in here to open up. That does need to be open if you're using your vent hood to allow proper uh, ventilation for that. Just don't forget to snap it shut when you get ready to travel. So right down here below the uh, bumper, we do have your accessory hitch. It's an inch and a quarter box. Now it's rated for 130 pound capacity. So you could put a small cargo rack or some bikes in there to take along with you if you needed some extra storage space. Now these two vents right here are gonna be for your refrigerator. So we have an upper vent and a lower vent. To get into these, we're just gonna turn these little twist locks. Now again, a coin can come in real useful here, especially if you're in a cold area. Using a coin to open these up is, um, makes life easy. 
Just twist them. They're gonna be, the slot should be facing this way in order for them to be unlocked. And then we're just gonna pull the clips out and then we can remove the cover. Inside, we're gonna find the backside of your refrigerator. There's not a whole lot in here for you as a consumer, but I do like to point out a few things. We've got your 110 outlet in here for the refrigerator, which is gonna be on the left corner here. Uh, your control box, lower control box is gonna be this box right here. It's a good, good idea to know that in case you are trying to do things out in the field or while you're out camping over the phone with somebody. And we also have your uh, gas valve here. And there is a manual shutoff valve for the gas valve or a manual shutoff uh, knob, which is gonna be just tucked in behind this cover right here. It's a little serrated um, knob that you can turn if you do for some reason get a gas leak that's not stopping. Uh, past that, you can shut that off to, to keep gas from going. Again, getting in here, checking for insect nests, things like that is gonna be a good idea. And this little tube is a condensation drip tube. It is normal to see occasional condensation dripping out of here. It does just sit inside one of the slots here on the back of the vent to um, allow condensation to drip out. To get this back in, we're just gonna take these three tabs at the bottom and line them, or I'm sorry, four tabs at the bottom, line them up with the frame on the side of the trailer. Once we get those in, then we're just gonna take the top and push it back into the snaps at the top. And then we're gonna take our coin again and we are going to turn these. And now our slots in those should be running this way and that will allow that to stay in place. If you do forget to latch those, it's a good chance that that will be gone when you get where you're going. Uh, just below that's gonna be our furnace. So when we're running our furnace, heat's gonna be coming out of this screen cover right here. So again, keep little fingers and things like that away and it will get hot. All right, over here on the door side of the trailer, we do have a fold away entry door grab handle. Uh, you just lift up on it to bring it into position. You can travel with it over the door if you so choose or to the back, doesn't make any difference. Um, either way it works just as well. As far as your entry steps, uh, this is gonna go for the front and rear step. This is a two door entry trailer. We're gonna take the bottom step, fold it over the top step, and then we're gonna pick up in the middle and we're gonna just kind of push the step in and that's where it's gonna travel. Uh, to pull it out for use, we're just gonna again grab in the middle, we're gonna pull out, lift up and pull out, and then we're gonna flip the bottom step down. Okay, so just moving in between the doors here, you are gonna see these two white circles up here. Those are gonna be your speakers. We've got your porch light here. This is gonna be a two, light, uh, two color light, so it can be white or amber. I'll show you the switch for that once we get inside the door. Behind this uh, black entry cover over here, we are gonna find your freshwater tank fill. Just gonna turn that cap to the left and remove it. And to fill, we're gonna put our freshwater hose into there, turn the water on and let it fill up. If you wanna carry a full tank of water with you, just let it run until the water gushes out. That will tell you it's full. If you only wanna carry a predetermined level, use the monitor panel on the inside of the trailer to determine how full the tank is, and then you can shut it off at whatever level you would like. It's gonna be a vent right there for you. No, nothing that you need to worry about there. Let's talk about wheels and tires just real quick. We talked about where the sticker is on the other side of the trailer for tire size and tire pressure. Now to do tire pressure, it's just like doing them on your car. You're gonna pop the valve stem caps off and adjust it to what Lance says the tire pressure should be. Now, as far as your lug nuts go, getting those torqued accordingly is a good idea before each trip. Uh, according to Lance, per the sticker on the side of the trailer that you need to check at 10, 25, and 50 miles and tighten the manufacturer specification, which is you can find in Lance's owner's manual on your lug nut torque. So it's a good idea to do. It's better to check it, take the five minutes to check them all than to maybe have one cause problems down the road. This little black block right here, this is so you can bring your TV outside or get an extra TV and it just mounts onto this block with a mount that comes with the trailer. Now to power all of that, you're gonna have an exterior 110 outlet here. And behind this other locking door, you're gonna find a 12 volt accessory port, two USB ports, and we're gonna find another antenna port. Again, our steps are gonna be the same here. Uh, just, in, just in front of the front entry door, we are gonna find your accessory uh, propane hookup port. So this is gonna be a quick connect. We're gonna pop our rubber plug out. You can see that this is kind of like hooking up an air hose if you've ever done that. It's got a quick connect collar that you just push back. You're gonna take your quick connect hose and push it in and let go and it should latch on. 
Once it's latched on, there is a gas valve on the back side of this that you just turn, uh, flip on. Once you rotate that to the on position, this can no longer be pushed back, and so you can't accidentally disconnect it. Once you get ready to disconnect, you do have to shut that gas valve off, and then you can disconnect. Don't forget to put the rubber plug in there to keep all the dirt and debris out of there while you're traveling. Underneath on this side, we are gonna find your spare tire and how to crank it down. So this is gonna be your crank for your spare tire. It just cranks up and down like a lot of cars do these days. You just put your tool on there, crank it down, take your spare out, put it on, put your flat back up in there and crank it back up in. Storage compartment here on the front door side. Uh, it's gonna be a slam latch, lockable magnetic catch for keeping it open. And inside we will find some cool stuff. We do have a touch light in here. So you just push on the face of it to uh, turn it on and off. We do have your pull out uh, card table here that you can pull out and use down the side of the trailer or wherever you would like. We also have your pull out storage compartment here to get that out. We're gonna unlatch this here. And that's gonna allow us to slide this out. Now this goes pretty much all the way across the trailer. So you can fit quite a bit of stuff in this storage compartment. When you get ready to travel, don't forget to secure it. And don't forget, it does have a extra pin lock on this side to keep things in place. And there is another light switch in here just below the touch light. It's gonna to be this black one right here, which is gonna run your accent lighting on the front of the trailer up here by your L, uh, LP cylinders. Last couple things out here. It's gonna be our other battery. It's just like the one on the other side of the trailer. Comes out the same way, all the good stuff there. And we have our other compartment door here, which is gonna be for our other stabilizer jacks on this side of the trailer. And we've got your uh, solar on the side for uh, portable solar. I'm just gonna pop that cap off. Portable solar panel can plug in right here and help keep the charge up on your 12 volt batteries. All right, guys, I think I got everything on the outside of the 2285. Let's go check out the inside. Okay guys, coming in the 2285, uh, let's talk over your uh, rear entry door, which is gonna kind of be the main entry door for this trailer. It is equipped with an electronic door lock. Uh, you've got your key code and everything right here on the handle, uh, tells you what it is, and that's your unlock code, okay? So to lock with this handle, you're gonna push the one, two, three, four buttons. They're, it's basically just two buttons. You'll push them at the same time and hold them until the door locks. So just like that, and you'll hear it beep, tells you that it's locked. To unlock it, it would be this code or your key. Uh, now you do have your screen door slider here, so when your screen door is latched to the wall, you can close this and that's gonna help keep the insects out. And we also have your privacy shade. It's gonna pull down. You're gonna have these two tabs here that are gonna fit into this receiver down here at the bottom, just like that. To get it to release, just kind of tip it down and then work that out of there and it's gonna retract the rest of the way up. Coming in the door to the right, we're gonna find your fire extinguisher. Uh, biggest thing about this, gonna be pushing down on this little green button on the top periodically, make sure that pops back up and that should tell you that it still has pressure in it and everything should be good to go. Um, all of our lights uh, or a lot of our lights and our awning control are gonna be right here up top coming in. So our first switch here is gonna be the awning control switch. It has a main power on off switch. And then we have your extend retract switch. The, it does need to be in the on position for the awning to extend or retract as well as for the wind sensor to work. So make sure this stays in the on position if you do have your awning deployed. Um, and then make sure that when you get ready to extend it, it is one touch, so you're just gonna push it and it's gonna run out and then finish when it's all the way extended. Make sure that your doors are clear and that there is nothing else in the way of the awning extension. And then same when you get ready to retract it, make sure it's not gonna run into anything. Moving to our lights, our first two switches are gonna be interior lights. This one says SO mood, uh, which is gonna be the uh, over the slide out. So SO is for slide out. That's gonna be your slide out lighting over there. Uh, the next one's gonna be our courtesy light. So that's gonna be our main two lights in the center of the trailer here in the living room area. And then we're gonna have our red switch and our patio switch. These are gonna be our two exterior light switches here. The red one's gonna be for the LED strip running the full length of the awning that you can see when it's fully deployed. And then our uh, other switch here is gonna be our patio switch, which again is gonna be that two color light that I talked about. If you go to the up position, it's gonna be amber. 
If you go to the down position, it's gonna be white. Now, when you go down to the white position, it's also gonna turn on your entry step light that is mounted underneath the entry step. Uh, so if you're gonna be leaving at night or coming back in the dark, you may wanna go ahead and flip that on so you can see your steps when you get back. Now, coming just into the trailer overhead is gonna be um, our typical light for the trailer, which is gonna have a little switch on the side of it that you turn on and off. And that's gonna go for pretty much most of your ceiling lights throughout the trailer. You do have a few that are gonna be a little different that have um, like a rocker style switch on them. So that's gonna be over your couch and then over your sink. Um, on this trailer, it is equipped with a GoPower solar panel. So that has been installed on this trailer. It is an option from the factory, but this one's been installed by us. Um, this is gonna be your control panel. You do have a USB charge on it. Um, the AC button here can remote activate certain inverters from GoPower if, you, if we were to do that. Um, it's got a boost button and then it's got some other uh, A, B buttons so you can cycle through what you can look at on the screen. Um, it's a good idea if you get with, uh, go with a Go Power system that you do read your owner's manual and understand how this operates. The other switch here is going to be our slide room switch, which is going to be our dinette. In and out, very easy operation. Uh, follow Lance's instructions here to the best of your ability uh, to make sure that the slide keeps operating as it should. And typically with this slide system, we do want to see full operation all the way out, all the way in every time it's operated and not doing short cycles. So to do that, you just push and hold the button and the slide will come in. You'll hear the motors ramp up and you'll start to bring the slide in. I'm going to do a short cycle just for demonstration purposes, but it's not what we recommend. And then to go back out, you're just going to push and hold. Once you get full travel, it's going to automatically stop on its own. All right, let's talk about your refrigerator real quick. To get in and out of this, two little paddle latches right here on the side, you just push them, pull the door open, very easy. As far as operation goes, we're gonna have three buttons down here that's kind of in between. First button's gonna be our power, bu uh, power button. So no lights on, anything, power's off. To turn it on, we're gonna push it. You're gonna see the lights come on and then you're gonna see the interior light come on. And then the next button here is gonna be our mode button. You can see right here we have an AU and an LP. So if we want to force that to LP, which is going to be the propane side of things, you would just push that and the LP light's going to come on. It will only operate on propane at that point. If we recommend running them in AU mode, which is auto mode. So it's going to automatically slit, select between 110 power and propane power. Uh, so if you unplug the trailer to depart, to go to your campsite or to leave your campsite, this would automatically switch over and light up on propane. As long as you have propane and good 12 volt battery, and it will continue to cool. When you plug back in, it would automatically switch back to uh, 110 power. So the auto mode is recommended operation. And the third button is gonna be our temp set. And you can see here, we can cycle through uh, three lights. Uh, the light furthest to the right is gonna be our coldest setting for the freezer and the refrigerator. Other than that, make sure the doors get shut completely when you close it. It will give you the best cooling. They do take anywhere from about 12 to 24 hours to completely cool, and it's a good idea to go ahead and have all of your stuff that you're gonna put in there pre-chilled if you can. Moving on around into our kitchen area, we're gonna find our convenience panel here from Lance. This is gonna provide us some readouts for our battery, and then our freshwater tank, our black water tank, uh, gray water one and gray water two. So those are gonna be those, gonna light up these LEDs here. Our three switches on the left is gonna be our water pump. So if we're dry camping and we wanna pull water out of, uh, from our fresh water tank and provide water to the trailer, we're gonna turn our water pump on. You'll see that pump light stays on and it's gonna stay on the whole time that the pump is turned on. Only time this needs to be turned on is when you need water and you're not hooked up to city water. The next two switches are both gonna be for the water heater. The middle one's gonna be for the gas operation. So if we turn that on, that gas light's gonna come on. It's gonna light up, do everything on its own. As long as this DSI fault light doesn't come on, everything should be operating normally. If it does, it could be uh, air in the line. You may just need to turn the uh, switch off and turn it back on and give it a couple of cycles to get all that air out of the system. Bottom switch is gonna be for the electric side of the water heater. We just flip that on, the electric light's gonna come on and it will heat your water. It's gonna take anywhere from about 20 to 30 minutes to completely heat that six gallon tank of water. You can run both of these for a faster recovery time if you have multiple people that need to shower. Now our switch that's right here is going to be for our two soffit lights over this area. We have our high point microwave in here, which is going to be like a kind of like a hot plate style microwave, no turntable. Still operates under the same principles of a microwave though. 
Our vent hood is going to have a light on it as well as our vent fan. So remember the vent fan does, uh, if you're using that, the flap on the back of the trailer does need to be opened up. Now, as far as using your three burner cooktop, we're gonna just flip our front piece of glass over the back piece and then tip the rest of it back and it's gonna sit against the wall. Now to light your burners, just pick whichever burner you wanna use with the three knobs. We're gonna turn to the, the flame right there and then we're gonna use the striker on the left to light our burners. And just like that, they light up very easy. Once you're lit, you can select your flame height or heat and do whatever you need to do on top. Now, just remember it is a good idea to let these cool completely since this is a glass cover before you do close it. Uh, to close back over the burners, you're just gonna lightly tip this back forward, control it all the way down so you don't break your glass and then fold that one back over. Uh, now this is a backsplash or uh, something there to protect your walls from heat, but don't bring your giant, uh, you know, walk there that you're going to put up there because it will generate too much heat and you can end up melting things. So use your smaller, your smaller cooking appliances, things like that. Um, so you don't generate too much heat here. Now, as far as lighting your oven, it's going to be this knob over here on the left. You're going to turn to the pilot position. And you can see it says push and hold. So you're gonna push and hold the button or the knob in. While you're doing that, you're gonna go down here to your pilot, which is gonna be right down here in the back middle. And you're gonna to need to use a match or a stick lighter and light that. While you're holding the button, once it gets lit, continue to hold the button for about 10 seconds and then let off. And once your flame stays burning when you let off, you can set your temperature, let it heat up, do your baking and move on. Just below the oven, we're gonna find your Progressive Dynamics power distribution panel. Now Lance has started equipping these with uh, lithium ready converters, which is really cool. So if you do wanna to upgrade to lithium batteries, it's, it's really just a switch in here that has to be made and you can charge lithium accordingly. But across the top here, we will find all your 110 breakers. These are just like what you would find in your home pretty much. So if you do overload a circuit, these will trip. And here on the left side, you will find our 12 volt fuses that power all the 12 volt stuff in the trailer. Again, picking up a, a variety pack of 12 volt fuses to keep on hand in case you do blow one is a good idea just in case so you don't get stranded without a water pump or something like that. These uh, black vents that you'll find down around the floor, those are gonna be your heat ducts um, for the furnace. Three overhead storage cabinets in your kitchen here. Uh, this is another one of those lights that uses a rocker switch on it. Now your blinds are all going to be uh, a regular old mini blind style that are behind the sink here. Uh, they use these typically in this area for uh, safety and cleaning purposes since you are working with heat and water. They want to, they're easier to clean, but they operate just like a standard mini blind would for lowering them. If you want to travel with them in the down position, make sure you do get them latched into the wall tabs. And then you've got your wand here for uh, opening and closing for light. So behind our kitchen faucet here, we do have a um, panel that re can be removed and inside you will find your trash can. Now the trash can comes out for easy cleaning and disposal, things like that. And just drops right back in there. And again, you can put your cover over it, which is gonna help optimize your countertop space. Your sink covers here can be removed. You can store these wherever if you need you know, continuous access to the sink. You do have a pull down spray head here with multiple spray patterns on the uh, here. So with just the buttons, you can go from a steady stream to a shower pattern. And then as far as temperature control goes, so flow control with the stem is gonna be towards the neck and towards the wall. Temperature to the back corner is gonna be hot and towards you would be cold. Now just underneath the sink, we will find your GFCI outlet here. You can see it's got a green light on it. So when that green light is on, everything is good to go. If you have no green light, this uh, outlet is tripped or you don't have 110 power to the trailer, one or the other, you'll have to kind of check it out. To reset it, if you just push that red one, that green light should come back on. If it doesn't, then you've either got something plugged in that keeps tripping it instantly, or you don't have 110 to the trailer or the outlet could be faulty. We have a couple of pull-out storage trays underneath the sink here. Adjustable shelf down at the bottom. Uh, to, to do that, they just use these little uh, clips here. So this can 
slide out and you can move this around to adjust for height of items. On the bottom on this side, you will actually find the back side of your exterior shower. And there will be a couple of valves back there where you can turn the shower on and off. So if you accidentally forget to winterize it and you get a water leak, you can shut the water off just to that and still have water to the trailer without a constant water leak. So uh, let's talk about some stuff that they've got up on the ceiling here. Uh, just kind of coming in the door overhead, you'll find your King Jack antenna. Uh, this is very easy to use. You'll see a switch here on the side that says on and off. That really just powers these lights right here. So once you get this tuned in, you can actually turn this off if these lights are bothersome to you. But what we're shooting for is the more blue lights, the better. And you can boost up with the attenuator here to strengthen the signal. And then to rotate, there's a little push thumb latch here on the side. And then you can rotate this antenna to try to hone in on that signal. Now, this does, uh, does not matter which position it ends up facing in for travel. So it's not like the old crank ups where you had to crank them up and down make sure everything was good to go. This one can be positioned anywhere and you can hit the road and you're good to go. Now the main power for this comes from behind the TV. So let's jump over here and talk about that real quick uh, and go over all of your TV stuff. So this is on a, on a bracket, a swing out bracket. There's a little loop in here. You just pull it down and then this can swing out. Now behind our TV, I'm gonna swing this this way. Um, on the wall over here, we're gonna find several connections. The very top, we do have a 110 outlet. So if you ever want to switch out to a 110 TV, you can. Below that's going to be your 12 volt power for the TV. Below that, we're going to find your um, cable for antenna, which is also going to have a little green light. I don't know if you can see it shining up there, but right next to that, you're going to find a button that turns that green light on and off. That also powers the overhead antenna. So if that green light is on, your antenna should have power. When it's off, that's when it's gonna allow the exterior cable port to allow your cable signal to flow in into the TV. Below that, we're gonna find HDMI connections. So right now, this uh, lower port is connected to your Jensen Entertainment Center. So um, you can play a DVD from here. It's gonna play through the HDMI cable to the TV. If you want to use satellite, so try to stick with me on this. Satellite receiver is going to sit down here. It's going to plug in for power right here. The cable port is going to be um, from your uh, satellite connection from the outside of the trailer to the receiver. So then from the receiver, it's going to go out on the one that's just below that. And then we're gonna make the switch on this cable up here and move it up to the top one. And that's gonna allow satellite signal to the TV. I know it's kind of confusing, it's some switching, but it, it's really, it works pretty smooth. It makes things a little, little simpler than having 18 cables running everywhere uh, for you at that time. So should be pretty straightforward. Uh, don't forget to latch this back into place for travel. Just swing it all back in. There you go. Give it a little tug. Make sure because if it doesn't get latched in and you go down the road, it may work its way out. And when you go to run the slide out, you end up with a smashed TV and possibly a damaged slide. So make sure you get it latched for travel. Again, our Jensen Entertainment Center, AM, FM radio, Bluetooth compatible, plays DVDs. It's all the good stuff in there. Storage cabinet just below that. Good place to store whatever you'd like. And we do have another uh, outlet down there by the floor to plug in. Um, appliances or whatever you would like to use. We're going to talk about our couch real quick and then we'll jump over and do the dinette. So over the couch we do have a couple of storage compartments here. So these do stay open. Your clock on the wall. So to remove it you're just going to rotate it to the left. That way you can get in and do your battery setting your time. To put it back in just line it up and rotate it and it's going to latch in. 110 outlet and then our couch with recliners. So to get on to recline, we just pull that lever there and that's going to kick out. To get on to close, they do take a good little kick just like any recliner does. Now this uh, also is a jackknife. So this makes into another sleeping area. So you're going to pull up on it and you can see underneath that we do have some other things, but let's talk about how to do the jackknife real quick. We're just going to pull this on around and it's going to lay flat and into another bed. To uh, 
put it back. We're going to pick up and we're going to push kind of once we reach that top, we'll push and it'll just kind of automatically rotate over. But before we finish up under here, let's talk about what we've got under here, which is going to be our water pump, which is going to be part of our winterization process. So that's going to be this clear tube and this little valve right here. So right now we're in position to pull water from the fresh water tank to provide it from the trailer. If we rotate this knob, now we're positioned to pull uh, that pump to pull liquid through this clear tube, which is for winterization. So in this position, this tube would go right down into your jug of antifreeze. You're going to flip on your water pump and pump water to all of your fixtures through the trailer, your shower, uh, all your faucets. You're going to run everything, your toilet, don't forget it, until it all flows pink. Usually takes about a gallon and a half, maybe two gallons, depending on the size of the unit, and until everything runs pink and then you're pretty much winterized and protected for the winter. Your shades in this trailer are gonna be the MCD projector style shades. So they pull down and stay down just like a projector does. So this is gonna be kind of your insect screen or your day screen here. This is gonna be your light darkening screen or your night screen so people can't see in at night. And also is gonna be light blocking. So to get these to go up, you just kind of give them a quick tug and they roll back up. Now all of your windows in here pretty much are gonna be the crank out style. So you flip this little paddle out right here. I like to kind of grab it first to get it started and then they just crank out and they crank in. Get them closed all the way, fold that paddle back out of the way just like that. Now one thing I did forget is how to bypass the water heater for winterization. It's gonna be back here underneath the kitchen sink. So let's jump back under here just real quick since I did touch on winterization. Let's not. Where'd they put it? Okay, never mind. I can't get to it. Where did they put that? That's where the water heater is. Oh, you gotta remove that panel. That's stupid. Why do they do that? Whatever. Skip, I guess. Okay. Ready to talk about the dinette? And then AC. And then AC. You're so close. Uh, <laughs> the bedroom we, shit we, is yeah, easy. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Right. Are you going to actually do. I the usually pull it down and make it out. Yeah. Well, this one isn't hard. So. It's not hard. It's just big. I just so. need to know what's about to happen. Sure. All right. So, in our dinette, uh, let's talk about the lights first real quick. So we do have a, a dimmer switch on them. So you can dim these down and have the light turned down. They also have an on off switch on the actual body of the light. So if for some reason this is not working, make sure that didn't actually get pushed there. One window that is gonna be different in here is gonna be your fire escape window in the dinette. You're just gonna flip this long lever handle out and you can pop this one for just ventilation like every other window. If not, you would push this all the way out and the window hinges completely out. You just yank that screen off of there and crawl out the window. So to make this thing into a lounging slash bed area, we're gonna remove the tabletop and then we're gonna pull the post out of the floor. Sometimes they come apart together, but let's see what's gonna happen here. So I like to give them a little twist if I can while I pick up, table's off set it to the side, then we're gonna work our leg out. Now this can store in a drawer or wherever you want. Um, I'm gonna put it right there for now. And I like to get my cushions out of the way for this part. So I just pop them up, cause that tabletop is actually gonna sit right here on these supports on the side. And we have to use these cushions as fillers anyway. So making things a little bit looser can make life a little bit easier. And then this is gonna fit in here one way only. It's going to go like that. And then we are going to take this cushion out. We're going to take the small cushion out. And we will slide. Nope, those stay there. And then our two seat backs fill in and make our other sleeping area. So to pop that all back up, it's just going to be reverse. We're going to pop our cushions out, set them aside. We're gonna pull our tabletop back out. Put our filler cushion back in here. 
it's easier to get to. Put our post in and put our tabletop back on. Just like so. And then you can go ahead and finish out putting all of your cushions back in. And you'll be back to a dinette. So very quick and simple process, painless, easy to go. Air conditioner, let's go over that guy real quick. Um, we've got vents on each end, and we've also got the chill vents that blow straight down in here. So these can be closed off on the ends with here. And you can close these off by just closing them kind of like the vents in your car. They rotate, you can angle them, all that good stuff. On each side, you will find filters. So to get these out, we're gonna pull down on these tabs while pushing in. And inside we will find your filter. Now this can be washed with a warm, mild soap solution. Let it dry before you reinstall it and then just pop it back in. So you'll see that there's two ears in here that this has to sit behind. So just work it in there. Try not to damage that. And then we're gonna pop this one back in again. We've got a couple of ears and then it just kind of snaps back in there. And that's pretty much it for how to take care of the lower unit. The thermostat is in the bedroom and I will show you that when we get back there. So right next to the air conditioner, we are gonna find your smoke alarm, nine volt powered. This is a very basic smoke alarm. Test it periodically, make sure it beeps, replace the battery as necessary and replace the smoke alarm as it wears out. So coming down the hallway here, we do have a privacy shade curtain, just as used with a little Velcro strap here to hold it. And when you move these, I like to pull from the top up by the track. You're just gonna slide it over. Kind of gives a little bit of privacy for the uh, hallway area here. You can slide that back and Velcro it back to the wall. So coming on the rest of the way back in here, so right here in the vanity area, you will find your air Excel thermostat. This is gonna power your furnace and your air conditioner. Three buttons, very easy operation. The arrows are gonna be temperature control and the main thicker bar at the bottom is gonna be for choosing what mode you want, whether it be fan or furnace or air conditioner. So we're just gonna cycle through. First one's gonna be fan and you can see here, um, when we push again, it's gonna go fan high, push again, then we're gonna to switch to cool high then cool low, then cool low auto, cool high auto. We really recommend cool high auto so you don't have any freeze up issues or anything like that. And then the um, arrows here would be to set your desired room temperature. The next one's gonna be heat. You can see heat flashing down here at the bottom. And then again, desired room temperature that would fire up the furnace. It's all automatic and it's gonna fire up and keep you warm. And then again, cycles back to the off position. For your light and your vanity, switch right here under your medicine cabinet, right next to your 110 outlet. Medicine cabinet. Uh, as far as your uh, water goes for your vanity sink, you do have a stopper just up and down for flow control. And then to the left is gonna be hot and to the cold will be right. Let's jump into the bathroom real quick and talk about what's going on in here. Uh, so we do have an overhead light in here. It's gonna be powered with the switch on the wall. Overhead, we do have a vent fan that also has a uh, switch on it for powering it on and off. Uh, now this unit has also been equipped with uh, vent covers so you can keep these open traveling down the road or during uh, rainstorms, things like that. Still have your vents open on this trailer because of those vent covers. Now, as far as your toilet goes, it's gonna be a foot flush, which is gonna be this pedal right here. So halfway down is gonna be water only into the bowl. So you're gonna want about the bowl about halfway full before you do anything. Once you get done using the restroom, you're gonna push that all the way down. Everything's gonna go down and you wanna give it about a 10 count to make sure we get plenty of water going down with everything and you will be good to go. Now, another thing to touch on while we're talking about toilets is to make sure that you're using RV toilet tissue and that you're using a good quality tank treatment to control waste digestion and odors. As far as your shower door goes, it's gonna be a magnetic closure. Just gonna slide it over to the wall and the magnet's gonna catch and hold it closed. It's kind of a rubbery membrane type shower door there. And you just slide it back. Now, as far as your shower head goes, again, it's a single handle for mixing your temperature. So somewhere between hot and cold to find your desired temperature flow control head by rotating the head there. 
and it's also height adjustable by pushing this knob on the slider and then you can slide that up and down. All of your roof vents in this trailer from Lance comes with a snap-on cover. That's part of their Four Seasons package that helps for temperature control in the winter and in the summer. Okay, last room of the trailer. We're going to be up here in our front bedroom. Again, we're going to have another privacy shade just coming right in here, privacy curtain. Again, pull it along the top, along that plastic track all the way over. Going to give you some privacy. Again, it's just held to the wall with a Velcro strap. Now this unit does have a secondary TV in it already. So you're going to have some HDMI uh, cables and stuff as well going to this TV. It's going to be 12 volt. One of these TVs could actually go out and hang on that wall on the outside of the trailer if you wanted to take things out there. So pretty cool little setup. Uh, this one is equipped with a max fan. I'm sorry, a fantastic fan over the... Uh, bed that's going to be remote control. So this does kind of have to be pointed at the uh, fan for operation, but your main power button here is going to turn it on. It's going to open it up and then you can select between manual and auto by using whether you want to go on temperature mode or speed mode, all that kind of good stuff. And then you can open up and down the lid just to do that. So you don't, you know, you can run it in a lot of different options. So pretty cool little device. These are going to be your snap on shades here. Your owner's manual bag from Lance is going to have all your owner's manuals in there for your appliances. It's a good idea to go through that. And if there's any warranties that need to be filed, uh, it's a good idea to get those things filed. Now over here on the off door side of the bed, um, you do have a um, wardrobe. You've got your reading light here. That's just a push button on the light base. And underneath, we're going to have a 110 outlet and a charging station with a 12 volt accessory port and two USB ports and a bedside drawer. Your big window in uh, the bedroom does have a different shade on it. It's gonna be a uh, kind of a cell shade, if you will. We're gonna slide this down. This is gonna be your nighttime shade here, uh, light blocking. Be your daytime slash bug screen here. And to separate these, it's just a little clip right here. You just push down on it and they'll separate. And you can adjust this for the amount of light you want anywhere in between or completely open. Now, as far as the window goes on this one, it is different as well. You've got to open up all these latches and then the window will push out. And then on these struts right here, you'll see these knobs. Once you find the height that you want, you tighten down on these knobs on each stay and that will hold the window open. Just remember to support the window when you get ready to close. Now, these also have a vent position. If you'll see on the receivers on the framework, you do have a secondary slot right here where you can close that latch into, and that keeps the window slightly open for ventilation. So if it's raining outside, you can just still vent this window and not have any water getting in. Don't travel with it in that position and make sure every latch is completely latched and pulled all the way closed for travel. On the door side of the bedroom here, um, underneath we're gonna find the same charging station and 110 outlet. And we are also going to find your uh, light switch for your mood lighting around your wardrobes. So on this trailer, you also are going to find equipped with a Victron uh, battery monitor. So this is going to monitor kind of the battery state or how much, how long you can operate and how much battery capacity you have if you are dry camping. So it's a cool feature to have um, to really kind of watch that stuff. It's, it's a pretty cool feature. Um, other than that, it's going to be our underbed storage. Just gonna flip up. You do have a uh, latch here that's gonna latch in through the side of the bed frame to keep this closed during travel. Just a, a simple, simple latch right there, but quite a bit of storage under here where you can fit stuff. All right, guys, thanks for coming along with me as we went through the 2021 Lance 2285 today. Hopefully I covered everything on the inside and outside so you know how to operate this trailer. But if I miss anything, don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can email us, call us, text us, whatever works best for you. And we'll try to get you taken care of. And again, this is Cody with Princess Craft RV.